to Blumcast episode four. We're here with Leeway. Everyone, introduce your names and what you do in the band. My name's Bella. I play the bass guitar in Leeway. I, I'm Randy, and I play guitar and sing. My name's Gavin, and I play the drums. Awesome. So, you know, much like every episode, we have an inside source for every band, right? Yes. And uh, it can be anything related to, you know, members of the band. Randy, would you like to explain to us and, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, share your experiences as a captain of a football team? Oh, God. <laughs> I forgot about this. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay, great. This is awesome. All right. Um. Well, geez. That was like years ago, to be fair. But yeah, I, I, I dabbled in some sports stuff, I guess, in, in high school and whatnot. And I played football in um, all throughout high school. And then in senior year, was the was there was moments where I realized this this sucks and I hate this and I'm not going to do this ever again and I'm gonna say f sports and I like music basically um, I don't know being I also was a cringy individual still am but uh, was a cringy individual and and would actually do the marching band halftime shows in my football uniform. That's embarrassing. That's, yeah, that's what that's I heard. That's literally yep. embarrassing. Really that embarrassing. That was one of the specific <laughs> things that I was Really, told. really yeah. embarrassing. There's pictures of you doing There, yeah, are, pictures. there are pictures. Yeah. Of I haven't source. seen that out. Who We've the heard hell is your inside source is what I'm wondering. Uh, Good old mellophone. Oh, man, I did. I marched the mellophone. You know what the mellophone is? Oh. It's a big trumpet. It's <laughs> one of these. That's how I describe it. I don't know. That, that was fun. Um... Yeah, no. I mean, it was it was okay. I, I I love marching band and I love music. I actually still participate in marching band in at Boise State. But um, um, yeah. I don't know. It was it was a good time. It was okay. Definitely Randy being Randy. Has being the captain of a football team like helped you at all with being the front guy in a band? Yeah, a good question. Um, yeah. I I've always kind of adopted certain leadership leadership positions i suppose uh in my upbringing all the way till now um i was like you know i started playing sports when i was like not eight or nine and i was always like a team captain of some kind um it was always something that like interested me in fact i'm actually an education major so i want to be a teacher hopefully like i always say like you know i do all this music stuff but when i'm 45 i want to be hopefully directing an ensemble or something like that, and that would be really cool. Um, because I like seeing growth, and I like seeing, like, people grow in their own ways, and it helps. It's You always learn from your students as well. So I'm actually a music ed major So at Boise State. So even in the marching band, I'm a drum major. So, yeah, Bronco Nation, let's ride. Uh, I'm a drum major, so I conduct the marching band. So there's, there's like, there's that. Um, and it definitely, there are certain, I guess, uh, aspects of that that carry over into fronting a band and also drumming in a band um totally different roles but also very similar in certain ways so um you know i'm always i like to say I, i'm a wannabe leader learning how to do that all the time not very good to be honest maybe or i, I don't know That's i think you're you good uh, you're a great teacher actually i don't know Thanks. i hear the marching you're band conducting buzzing in <laughs> that's cool yeah. you sound great yeah you hear the marching band yeah rehearsing and stuff because i'm in that's a cool, pioneer yeah. hall Okay. Oh, it's like right there. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, you mentioned to me you heard us. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, good question. Well, we would like to talk about your guys' new single. Yeah. So, everyone go listen. Um, how did it come to be? And what was the recording process like? Yeah. <clears throat> it's all Randy. This is all me. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, like, Sorry for right now. I mean, you guys can always pitch in, please. <laughs> but also, the uh, question is for you. So. <laughs> narcissistic dictator here. Um, I wrote that song in senior year of high school uh, about, um, yeah, a pretty real situation. This band has been through many different lineups. It was so for backing up even further. I like the project started my freshman year of high school in 2017 slash 2018. Um, and we just got together basically to learn songs for the talent show because we had no idea there was a music scene or people playing music. We just did not think that was a thing. So we we like learned songs, uh, aka Zombie by the Cranberries, my <laughs> freshman year, and played that. Um, the drummer at the time was my best friend, and we were we grew up together. And it was kind of one of the situations where I was just I didn't know any drummers, and I knew how to play a basic beat. So I was like, dude, sit down, hop on the kit, play that and let's be a band, right? 
Um, and then I, coming into the music scene in like 2019, 2020, I was like, whoa, there's actually a lot going on. I want to get out here. I want to write my own music and I want to, you know, and, you know, me and him pretty much really just drifted apart because I really wanted to pursue this and try to get involved in the scene and meet people and play music all over town and elsewhere. And he was just not wanting to necessarily do that. And, um, you know, we kind of had a falling out basically, and he was the first drummer. And um, we had a new drummer who was really, really good um, come in and join the band. So it was just kind of this whole messy kick someone out process but he was also my best friend so it was this whole thing pretty uh it, it, for the time you know I'm like a senior in high school and I was like oh my god this is the most emotional stuff in the whole world and it's <laughs> not you know um so I wrote this song called Blame uh because the situation just kind of led to the loss of the friendship and honestly most of the record that's going to be coming out soon um and we can talk about that as well uh but is about the process of gaining and then losing relationships um, as you're going on through your upbringing in life. And so um, that's what this first single is about, um, specifically about the kind of the schism that was caused between me and a group of friends. And um, anyway, so that's pretty much what the, what the song is about. But it's, it's very much like a self-reflective, like, this is my fault, you know, and I apologize for it, but there's also nothing you can, like, I'm not going to, like, do anything else about that other than acknowledge, you know, fault. So tell me I'm to blame, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then the recording process, um, for a while there, when this band was a two-piece, way back when, <laughs> 20, 2020, 2021, uh, we built our own studio in this shed at the other drummer's house, and uh, we had this place all geared up, to record we soundproofed it it was awesome and uh and then me and him had a falling out so um then i joined a different band started drumming and forgot about this project for a while so any early recordings just kind of got totally got scrapped and then me i uh, was in this other band am in this other band uh raccoon tour and me and nate decided we're like we're gonna move to new jersey and i was like this is awesome i'm gonna actually yeah i'm gonna drop out of school and i'm gonna move to new jersey with you uh and uh uh, basically I was like before I do that I really need to get these like six songs done and recorded so that I can say bye bye leeway forever and not worry about it ever again um, and at that time I didn't have a band anymore so I went into the Tonic Room Studios which uh, is an amazing shout amazing, out Jason Jason amazing recording studio uh, super cool place best in town so uh, Jason uh <laughs> Uh, hooked up with that guy, and we recorded basically through December and January, um, nine days, uh, in the tonic room, and I recorded all the instruments because I didn't have a band. Um, so when you listen to that, that is that is all me, minus a couple things um, that were a guitar player friend of mine. But, um, yeah, we, we, but we knocked that out, and what's funny is that I, that was pretty much it. That was kind of like my, okay, I'm going to put that out to nobody, and I'm going to focus on this in New Jersey. Um, and then he hit me up literally right when the demos were all done. And he was like, just randomly was like, Hey man, like we should jam. And I was like, who, I don't even know who this guy is. Like, I think I've seen him on campus every now and then, but like, why is he, why is he texting me? Like asking about this. And, and then he came and he, uh, loves Dave Grohl and Nirvana. And it was, it was like that all these Within other, like 15 minutes of us jamming. Yeah. He came over, he was from California. So that's also why I never n knew him before and, literally jammed for like 15 minutes and was like yeah this is it this is sick we're gonna do this so um and then throughout some time bella came into the project uh, me and bella are like best friends in college so it was kind of one of those things she plays cello fun fact yes you know <laughs> i don't know and i was like tip it on the side cello you got a bass that's a reference come on yeah <laughs> all right uh so that's where we're at here and that was the recording process and it's been kind of a process of getting it out now and Kind of almost there. Audience, so. We're almost there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you touched on this a little bit, but um, what would you say is like the um, what, what what would you say are like the major musical inspirations that that go into creating you know that sound that you hear um, mm -hmm. on that single and you know I'd assume on the the record that you guys are uh, working on right now. Yeah, man. Um, for me, I am super super influenced by uh, late Romantic era classical music. Um, specifically uh, Weber 
and um, let's see, uh, Rachmaninoff Chopin. and Chopin. Rachmaninoff and Chopin. So, and I've been really so I'm a clarinet player in the music department. So I get a lot exposed to a lot of, as well as like a piano player. So I get exposed to a lot of that kind of music and the kinds of different seventh chords and chord progressions and kind of ways of going through pieces. Um, I find really fascinating. So, and I've always actually growing up, I've always, I, piano was the first thing I ever played. So, um, like playing Beethoven stuff. Um, and then as I got older and I started getting really introduced to, to rock and roll music, my dad's a huge jam band guy. He loves fish and the dead and, um, Mo and a bunch of different like hippie jam bands. So I grew up listening to that over and over and over. And then finally I was like, okay, this is all cool, but what's like, what's like the rock and roll stuff? Like what's the heavier stuff? And so coming throughout high school, it's like, okay, what, what's a Nirvana? What is that? And so I uh, started getting super influenced by the 90s grunge um, sound. Um, and then, you know, um, a lot of, uh, so as of late and during recording that, I was going through a huge uh, Queens of the Stone Age and Muse phase. Uh, the Muse phase is kind of not even a phase at this point. It's been like three or four years of just being like, I love Matt Bellamy. So um, add that all up, that's where I sit, um, and that's where the sounds on the record definitely come from. When I was talking about the mixing process, like I was like, listen to Newborn by Muse and make it sound as much like that as you possibly can, you know? And so and Jason did a great job at making the drums as present as they are, as well as the vocals sitting where they sit. Um, all that stuff is super... I geek out about that kind of stuff, so, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, um, you go. Gavin and Bella, there what are you guys' guys go. influences when you're uh, playing your respective instruments in the band? You go. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up, um, my dad was a big influence, meant, like, introducing music. So, I mean, Nirvana, Red Hot Chili Peppers, so, like, Dave Grohl, Chad Smith are my, probably my top two. But, I mean, as of recently, there's this um, small duo band out of Toronto, named Cleopatric and Ian Frazier is a drummer. If you haven't heard of him, go check him out. Amazing band. I've been taking a lot of inspiration from him just lately. He's an amazing drummer. So as of lately, it's been that band. Nice. Awesome. Um, for bass lines and chord progressions, I think Built to Spill is a great influence for me. I really got into them when I learned that the bassist, Melanie Radford, um, was a bass performance major, I believe. I'm yeah. not sure about that. Uh, Boise State. And that my cello professor, shout out Dr. Hodges, <laughs> um, taught her. And so I think that's really cool. And I just love the way that their bass lines sound and how their chord progressions sound. Growing up, I was always like this weird emo kid <laughs> with like the green hair and everything with the fringe. So I always loved My Chemical Romance, 21 Pilots. And it was my dream to just, like, tour with them one day. And so that's always an inspiration. Um, I find a lot of inspiration in artists like Boy Genius, Phoebe Bridgers, and um, C. Rose for lyrics. I want to write lyrics for Leeway in the future. So. She's actually, of the new stuff that you, uh, we play live, like, she's contributed oh, nice. to the lyric writing a pretty good bit. So that's pretty exciting. She's, yeah, so... Well, um, oh, the EP. So, yes. so, of course, we've talked a little bit about the EP. What can we expect from the EP? <clears throat> yeah, so there's going to be five songs on there now because Blame was the six. We recorded six. Mm -hmm. I want Blame to kind of sit on its own. Um, and then the, the EP will come out uh, kind of holding to the same themes. It's all going to sound the same, all created in the same space and environment. Uh, headspace um, yeah I mean those are the the five songs coming are are songs that have been written since like 2019 2020 um, and then just kind of constantly refined through like literally five or six different like band rotation lineups throughout time so um, it's gonna it it, it kind of sounds like that in my opinion it sort of sounds a bit more scatterbrained than maybe if I sat down and with these Three, with us three people and just wrote it in a month like it sounds like it was like okay they were in this phase during that time okay and there was this phase but it also sounds relatively cohesive um, and it'll be entitled Growing Pains 
And we're, I'll tell you this, our EP release show is going to be December 14th. So Be there. So be there. That's that means the first announcement, right? That was the is, first. That's the first time I've yeah, said anything, so there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go. I'm really excited. It's going to be great. Um, we're setting that all up at the Shrine Underground, and yeah, it's going to be awesome. I will say so. that this EP will make you feel like at least it makes me feel like my 13 year old self like longing and yearning and just wanting to be found and reflecting and growing it's like sitting at your window at midnight being like what can i be and i think it'll resonate with a lot yeah. of people yeah i think so too i think that's a fair and accurate way of putting it for sure awesome uh, and you said a date for the show, but yeah. do you guys have a specific release date in mind for the, the actual music? So the specific release date that is in mind is going to be um, somewhere in the realm of the 10th to the 14th. So I want it to come out a couple days, hopefully before prior to the show being awesome. out. So. Sorry I don't have like a complete release date yet for you. To be honest, we're waiting on art. That's like mm-hmm. the only thing um, is... As lame as that sounds, uh, that's all it is. But as Nate Burr told me, you can't half-ass the art. You just can't do it. And so I'm like, okay. That's a very Nate thing to that's say. A very Nate thing to say, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Who's yeah. doing the art? Um, we have these couple, a couple of uh, <clears throat> uh, students actually from Boise State that are not from here. They're from California um, that we met uh, that are graphic design students. So um, forgive me, I can't remember their names right now. Sal and um, Mackenzie, I think, is her name. We met up with them and kind of had different meetings and stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what have been some of your favorite releases, all three of you, um, mm-hmm. some of your favorite, you know, music releases to come out this year? Um, I guess locally or in general, yeah. but, you know, um, just what are some of your uh, favorite pieces of music that have been, you know, coming out around this year? Carl's Bad. <laughs> My favorite That's local release, release, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did, love, did Moss's oh. album? Come yeah, that was out? the it beginning. That was like January. That yeah, was that is awesome. a very good album. Yeah. We yeah. opened up for them, or we played a show with them in the Shredder in mm-hmm. what was it May? I was mm-hmm. blown away by yeah. that whole band. They're so tight, and just their pocket is amazing. Groove, groovy, groovy yeah, cats. That That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, groovy cats. They're they're good, man. Um, so yeah, that's fair too. Um, of course, Grimage, they just had their release. I think that was, I think it's awesome. I love like the, I love how raw it is. Like it's yeah. organic. They have so many like, mm-hmm. um, I love how short and to the point a lot of all the songs are. Um, I don't know. I, I, I yeah, really good piece. It's kind of cool too because we, we share the same rehearsal space with them. So we kind of saw like the album kind of writing itself because we like have a whiteboard. Yeah, We kind of see different that's parts kind of growing. It's pretty funny. Yeah. The raw yeah. feeling definitely comes from because they recorded all of that. I Chop say, shop. Yeah, no. No, it was Bat. It, it was a Spencer, Spencer Bat. Bat. Oh, okay. Oh. And we went, we went and watched them record some stuff, took some pictures and stuff. Cool. But um, they recorded everything like live. I think they yeah. at most did eight takes of one song. That's awesome. Wow. Like, and then I had to um, piece together all of their so that they could actually listen to them yeah. off this hard drive and like listening to every individual one you could like tell that raw energy came from the fact that they were just playing it live mm-hmm. there was no double tracking of guitars Come on. it definitely was just like a, a very like an amalgamation of, yeah, of just yeah. that's awesome that's yeah, awesome. Name. They nailed that name. name. Like this guy. Name. That is a great name, and yeah. it. I won't. I will say, like, it doesn't lack anything. It's not lacking no. the doubles. Like, it sounds as big and full as it needs to, and it's. But yeah. it also sounds raw and like, just awesome. It's like exactly the sound you want from a band like them. You know, mm-hmm. like exactly just in your face. For and, sure, and it's like exactly and, what and you're gonna expect from them. And yeah. Then, I, similarly, I think Carl's Bad is exactly what you'd expect from Crush. I think it sounds exactly as it should. I um. I, and I think that both of them had Julius do their art, if I'm yeah. correct. Yeah. And I, yeah. So fun fact, I've grown up with Julius. We went to like sixth grade and beyond through oh. school <laughs> together. Um, and I, he was always, he was, he's always been drawing and always a talented artist. So I love that kid. I love that guy so much. So shout out Julius. <laughs> shout out he Julius. actually designed the first leeway stickers too, back oh, in 2020. Cool. So we have nice. only like a couple of them left that we haven't sold, but like the butterfly, that's like a cool, like uh, yeah. design I butterfly. On my cello case. That one. That's Julius, so yeah. You mentioning Julius is actually foreshadowing. 
for some, some future bum cast plans. Perhaps, so. perhaps. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That's the man. Julius is the man. It's silly that all three of the albums uh, we mentioned so far are also bum alumni. <laughs> are they? <laughs> yeah, they those were the, the, the other three podcast That's episodes. That's right. Moss, yeah, Moss, Moss Grimage, Grimage, and, uh, and That's so funny. <laughs> Looks like we're doing our jobs right. Paid promotion. That's <laughs> awesome. And I actually didn't even think about that, I promise. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. So, yeah. Outside like, of... Oh, can I talk Yeah, about yeah. That? My, like, big prediction is that Amalgamation is going to be remembered in the same way that uh, Crutch by King and Queen of the Losers is. Yeah, like, cool. Not a perfect album, yeah. but a special one. A special album. That, like, marks a, a time in Boise. Rest in peace, man. King and Queen. Yeah. Yeah. You actually never got to see them. I, I like, came in right at the yeah. right when they were done. I came in right as the Joy Runners broke up. I got to see them. I know cool. you did, and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, local legends. Yeah. Uh, and then, in terms of um, outside of Boise, like what kind of uh, music in general, maybe a bit by bigger artists or you know other albums or, or uh, yeah. singles or whatever have come out, uh, you know, in, outside of Boise that you guys like? Queens of Stone Age. Yeah, I knew you can feel it. <laughs> yeah. uh, their their new record that, that was, came out in June sixteenth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember dates <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Happy uh, birthday, Gavin. I know, that is came out on my birthday. That was your birthday. That's oh, why. Nice. I, and, and my mom's birthday, that's why I remember that My one. birthday's <laughs> July 14th. That's weird. <laughs> nice. Cool. I've actually never listened to music in my life, oh. so <laughs> oh. I can't answer this question. <laughs> You're just kind of play, playing it by ear, literally, just kind of well, figuring it out. what I do is I just find a song I like and I'll listen to it. I don't know when it, if it came out this year or not. So I, well. well, did you like the record from Boy Genius? I loved it. Yeah, I was going to say Boy Genius. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah the um, record. The Foo Fighters dropped earlier oh, yeah, this year, Foo right? Fighters. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's so true. Those. So, yeah, like, yeah, this good. has been just such a year for me that it's like I don't remember what's this year and what's last year. That's true. Or what hasn't happened or what's real. <laughs> Nothing's real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that the Foo Fighters record is really good. Um, yeah, Boy Genius record is really good. The record. Did Paramore's album come out last year? Yeah, that year? was no, that or was this that year. Was this year, okay, like well, February. Yeah, I really loved that one. I've always loved Paramore. We were yeah. gonna go see Paramore, and then they postponed it, and we oh, never got no. to. Me and Bella drove all the way to Seattle, and that's then, so and sad. Then so, but you know what? I love Seattle, and that's fine. We went and got pizza, and then <laughs> drove home. <laughs> drove to Seattle for pizza and came home. Yeah, sure. pretty much. Ah, uh, that's worth it. Worth we the, did worth get the drive. matching tote bags though. We did. Because we're twins. <laughs> we look the same, don't we? I think. Maybe not. I can see it. A little bit. I, can, I see it. Definitely. Well, we've actually had more people than you'd think ask if we're related. We have, like, this part of our face is, like, really similar. Yeah. And our nose. You know, everyone thinks the you guys nose, are siblings. Yeah. Huh? Your cancel tilt. Yeah. Is it over for me? I don't know. Surge <laughs> <So, laughs> <so> over. <laughs> it's always... The game was rigged from the start. <laughs> Um, kind of following this last question, what are some of your guys' like all-time favorite songs? Just throw them out. You can list multiple. Oh goodness. There's like a very long list. Just, just throw it <laughs> out, just man. Just throw it out. You guys go. I'll, I'll let you guys have the floor. Come on. <laughs> I can't not say "Song for the Dead." I can't <laughs> not say that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's got to be up there for me. Probably yeah. "Family Van" by Cleopatra. That's really good. Oh man, probably Sweet. top two for me. I just me. love indie rock. Um, Sid Matters Obstacles it is like mm. the title song in Life is Strange, that video game. That's probably like my all time favorite song, I would say. I forgot that that song existed I, and yeah. that just brought it's back just like, so much to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, Life is Strange was so huge to like my middle school experience. Just that entire so, like, soundtrack is like all of those are like oh, my yeah, all time no, favorite. Like that, that vibe is very that vibe particular. Is, that's and it, like, Bella vibe right there. Oh, definitely. <laughs> that's I, I why I'm that. me. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, February Stars by Foo Fighters, if you've ever heard that. Um, oh, man. Everlong's got to be up there. Somewhere. Everlong is really great. Like, Everlong is unironically, awesome. that's just an amazing yeah. song. Yeah. Um, there's a f- specific uh, acoustic recording of Chris Cornell, because I don't, I don't love the band version. There's a, uh, well, I love it. It's fine. But uh, Like a Stone, there's Chris Cornell. He plays it acoustic in, like, this one video. that I, and I, I would always go back to that. There's not, like, an actual recording that's out or anything. Um, that was, like, it is always one of, one of my favorites, too. Um, oh, man. Um... All-time favorites. 
It's tough. It's tough to it's just hard because I listen to so much stuff. That's like that's my favorite. I'm like that little boy on TikTok with the crumble cookies. I'm like that's my favorite. <laughs> That my favorite. <laughs> like every song I listen to. So. Yeah. You got to put some Radiohead up there. Oh, like, yeah. Radiohead. Yeah. How, do you, how do you not think about Radiohead? Oh there? man, uh, <laughs> exit music for a film. That yeah. is a really good one. Yeah. What do you guys think step. of uh, Body Snatchers? That's the, that's that my, is, that's, I like that song. That's that my album, underrated pick for like one. one of the best Radiohead I really songs. Like I think that, that album in Rainbows that is objectively album. one favorite. of the best albums yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's my, probably my favorite. That is a really good one. And I'm not a big album listener, so that's saying something. That, yeah, that means a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. you're a song listener. I listen to songs. Are yeah. you one of the people where you have like your Spotify playlist and it's all liked songs and you just listen to your liked songs playlist instead of like Pretty listening much. to anything else? I like I'll have like one playlist a year. I always make it in the autumn and I'm like, this is my playlist and then I just end autumn. up going back to my <laughs> This is autumn. Autumn? Yeah. In, in English teacher? <laughs> that's the correct word. <laughs> that's technically. the correct word. I yeah, guess that's yeah, the right Sorry. word for it. Fall. <laughs> fall. It call fall because leaf fall down. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely, that's uh, accurate. Um, so keeping along the same kind of uh, you know sequence of questions uh, in like the same vein, uh, what's some guilty pleasure music that you guys like? Like uh, we've a- we asked this to Moss too, I think, mm-hmm. and we heard some pretty good ones. Oh yeah, and crush. Right? Yeah. I think, yeah. So, what do you guys? What are some oh. uh, some guilty pleasures that you guys go back to? I'm not going first on this one. <laughs> I regret nothing. I love like drag queen music. Mm-hmm. RuPaul, Call Me Mother, Kitty Girl. Are you not gonna say Megan? Oh, you're not even guilty about that one. <laughs> I'm not guilty about Megan. I love me some Megan the Stallion. Mm-hmm. Megan the motherfucking Stallion. Um, I just love like female rap. It is my favorite ever. And yeah. I will, b- like, put on any song. I'll sing all the lyrics. She will. It's like um, a different side of me. I always, dark side. I always <laughs> feel like, like, when I'm in a room full of, like, musicians or, like, scene people, to say that 21 Pilots is one of my favorite bands of all time, but they just are. Yeah, they're a Christian rock band. Who cares, man? Who cares? Do 21 Pilots... They, their music is good. They frick. I don't okay. think that's a guilty pleasure. It's, that's not a guilty pleasure. It's not a guilty pleasure? I don't think so. It depends on what circles you run in, because I definitely think in, like... Like you said, in the like around scene in people, the scene people, like I'm not gonna go be some like people that are like, like, <laughs> like, well, like it's like it's that's cringe. It's weird because like at first that stuff is like super influential to like a lot of people. You it know, it is. Like, that's like your and, first. Like, like Nate is the biggest Twenty One Pilots. Yeah, I saw is. Nate for the first time at a Twenty One Pilots concert. I didn't say hi, but I recognized <laughs> him. Like, oh my god, like that's Nate. Yeah, yeah. I saw him walking around at a Twenty One Pilots concert. So like, uh, you know, right. their early stuff is super super influential. You get to like 2016, and it's like. You know, it's like radio music. Yeah. It's like whatever. Well, but uh, Trench is an but then you get album. well, you get past that. Really Trench is really but it didn't do it didn't do as album. good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people. A lot of people that were into like their earlier stuff got like kind of disillusioned or like like frustrated with like the more radio poppy direction they took. Mm. And then when they went back and they did like some rock stuff and they did Trench, like it was a way different vibe than like blurry yeah. face era. So, you know, I think a lot of people just kind of stopped listening to, um, you know, after blurry face. Cause that's what they came to expect. And so yeah. when trench was totally different, it yeah. kind of shook things up. I guess yeah. anything like guilty pleasure for me is me just indulging in what I was obsessed with when you were in kid. middle school. Yeah. And like when yeah. I was a kid. Oh, I'll tell you this right now. One Republic. One and, Republic is dude, good. I used to listen to that all the time. One Republic and Imagine Dragons. Imagine was Dragons, the shit. Dude, for Smoke me. and Mirrors by Imagine Dragons is, is a, a very, very, very good album. Objectively, a very good. After that, they sold. It's After that, record. they yeah. sold. I listened to Smoke and Mirrors like daily on my I way to too. elementary school. Yeah, like, I did. Man, like, I would listen to that when constantly. The days are like Gold going. off that album, the song Gold. That is a good song. Yeah. Like. There's so sure. many good songs off that album. Okay, One Republic, you guys are sleeping on Ryan Tedder, man. That guy, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Tedder, as, as an industry guy, is, as a songwriter, is a songwriter. How, I don't even know how many songs he's written, but he's like on, on Pharrell levels of, yes. of writing songs. Yeah, like, objectively, come on. The Remember, Coldplay? Coldplay. Coldplay, in Coldplay that is group. less guilty to me. Like, yeah, I can, say, less. I can say Coldplay and not feel as bad at all. One Republic are the Counting Stars people, right? Yes. Yeah, I listen to their music all the time in oh like, oh, like, elementary iPod. school. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Yeah, I had some One Republic on my like my iPod. Like, come on, man. Man, I recently pulled out Fireflies. 
Just was listening to that. Owl Blast, City. Blasting Dude, that. Owl come City is like, I had to sing, I had to sing that on my story. Remember that? <laughs> you what? did sing that on I had to sing, had to sing you also had Fireflies to, you also had to for, sing for Philanthropy And you also challenge. had to That's sing amazing. Sex Talks by Megan Thee Stallion, but you, you didn't did. do it for some reason. Didn't I that. didn't get the, the Venmo. Well, I wasted we play a lot of We play a lot of pop tunes and marching band. So I, I, I will say I love Party in the USA. I love that song. That's well, actually a, it's a good song. song. For what it is. It's a pep classic. That's it, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, these songs come on, and I'm not going to be like, ew. Like, I'm going to go, all right. Counting Stars has, all, has all those little melodies that that are like added on top of each other. So yeah. like but different every time instruments you listen, can play you're like, the different oh my gosh, parts. That's in there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's like the, there's like all sorts of different things weaving in and out. So oh, if you yeah. just add that to a marching band, you've got like horns playing one thing, yeah. and you've got everyone playing like oh, a yeah. different part, and it just all comes together. It's like like super uh, like surprisingly intricate arrangement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. yeah, I have a before we move on a very important question for you yeah. guys to uh, to ask you. Uh, do you know who Buff Carell is on YouTube? Because oh someone I can't remember which one of you said Fireflies, but when we started to talk about Owl yeah. City, man, I was showing my friend Buff Carell the other night. We found out he has a video of Fireflies. Basically, he's this dude that is always wearing the same pair of jeans, shirtless in his bedroom and his camera is like angled at a mirror is he buff yeah and he's very <laughs> buff and shirtless and very oily oh. <laughs> he's like it's he's like, like it's, greased it's, up. he's shiny but it's not like sweat you know it's no like he's 100 is greased up yeah he's greased and up and he like leans off to the side and plays a song and then he s- does his best to sing the song while dancing and it's beautiful buff corral buff corral c-o-r-r-e-l i will check him you out. need to find that he has like, he has like 400 thousand subscribers on YouTube and I found this guy a while ago I love him he is okay. like such a strange phenomenon yeah. but like my I was showing my friend the other day and we found him singing fireflies it's beautiful okay his dance moves unmatched it's it's he has all seven minutes of Bohemian Rhapsody in one of his videos. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, you I'm need, listening. No. I'm watching that to tonight. Find it. It's I, so funny. I do need to find. Yeah, it. so <laughs> definitely shout out Buff Carell. Let's if, get him on the podcast. Yeah, we, need, we gotta get Buff Carell on the podcast if yeah. possible. So uh, shout out Line to that out. guy. But I just I just want you guys to know that you know you need to see that. I'll guy. check that out. Yeah, like I just need to. Yeah, I gotta get you on that. You you gotta get you're getting me on it. Yeah, so for sure. Well, about a week ago, <laughs> <laughs> about a week ago, we posted on our Instagram at Boys the Underground Media. Go follow. Yeah. Um, community questions for Leeway. Okay. And from at Ari is Bulgaria. <laughs> I want to see Randy do a backflip. Can you do? Can, a backflip? can you do a backflip? Into a pool. I said that I, I said we, were, imagine, we were hanging out before just stand, this. Just stand on the box and then imagine the nope. carpet is a pool. That's not enough space. <laughs> mm, you don't yeah, have to worry nah, about landing just when you're good at it. And just then you be can good do it in that area. Just be Spider Man. You've seen those like, like those parkour guys on YouTube and the free running guys. They can do backflips you know, in like one inch of space and land on the bar or whatever. It's like, yeah, just do that. You know, I'm actually not that athletic. So uh, surprisingly, I, I, I couldn't do a backflip just in, on the ground. You can do a death drop. That's I could do that. Crazy That's sickening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were we were hanging out before this, and I said that you seem like the type of guy that can do a backflip. Seem like, and it. I'm actually surprised that you can't. I know. Like, you definitely seem he like that type. He does give off that. Vibe. Yeah, he gives he off really backflip does. vibes. I know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm really sad, honestly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Backflip into the pit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll learn. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, and then do uh, it, one day, sure. one day I'll do it off a piano or something. Okay, at a show. At a yeah. show. What are you fucking Tyler Josh Dunn? Josh oh. Dunn does it. Oh, you need to you Fake need fan. to give us oh. you need it's to give us years, warning okay. of that though, okay. so that we can film it. Okay, and uh, and and have a have and we'll, that. We'll come back to. I'll be. Pra- I have a trampoline. Yeah, yeah. I'll practice. practice. Yeah, I'll for practice. sure. For sure. To a show. I'll I'll practice. Practice. I want to come over. And I promise. Play and jump on the trampoline. I promise. I'll you know. Practice. Okay. You know when you get uh, in like your sets, right? You yeah. Get up on the stool and you're yes. like drumming with Gavin, right? Yeah, yeah. Jump off the stool. Ooh. Ooh. That's I think that you clear the stage a little that bit. Could, have Bella like yeah, stand off yeah, to the yeah. side and pull everything. You got some. See now if there. it goes no, wrong, I think he lands it on Bella's shoulders. Oh, that would oh. be so dope. You can't go wrong because if I land it, it's it's kind of awesome. But yeah. if I don't land it, it's actually kind of more awesome because it's like it's like a stage diving accident. It's kind of like everybody just saw this <laughs> epic like, fail. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just cool. get him going. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're gonna go viral either way. Either way, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Want to hear about my first stage diving experience? Yes. <laughs> Let me hear about Zulu it. and I went to go see Zulu back in September. Okay. And so I finally, I finally make my way to the front. I'm like, I'm gonna do it during their set. Yeah. And Braxton Marcellus, he's the coolest guy. Guitarist okay. of Zulu. Um, I like get up. I just wanted to say that, by the way, he has nothing to do with this. <laughs> um, uh, I, I get up and then I jump. But I don't jump far enough. Oh no! So the top of my body is on top of all the people, and then my feet, the tips of my toes, are still on just the stage. <laughs> so I'm like on. I'm basically just like You're like Supermaning. I'm like, like Supermaning like... over these people, and then I still I got a scar. Oh, from you have a scar. Up. Yeah, because it rubbed against my my jacket when I hit the ground. But Ooh. it was yeah, that was fun. And then I did it at Scal, and I was good at it. Okay. So <laughs> you redeemed yourself. yourself. I was stage dived at, uh, at Queens, That's right? sibling I telepathy. Did. That's cool. I'm more stage surfed or crowd, crowd surfed. Crowd surfed. I didn't stage dive. Oh, uh, okay. I got to the stage and then they like told me to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. Many such cases. Yeah. Josh Harkin. Yeah. Shout out Zulu. Zulu. Shout out Zulu. Shout out Zulu. Zulu. A lot of shout out. Where did you see Zulu at? Fun. The it's a, the, the okay, Shredder. Shredder. That's right. On my Fire. Too. That's pretty cool. So yeah. amazing. That's awesome. And then I met Braxton. He knows... Zulu knows what Boise Underground Media is. We got the hey. signature on the shirt. We got the signature on the shirt. You know our, yeah. our Sophie shirt? We have a Zulu There's been signature. some big bands coming through the Shredder, actually, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. some, like, yeah. some names coming through that are, like... I think Scowl's the cool. biggest band that signed it, right? S- Scowl didn't sign it. Well, no, I mean uh, Zulu. Oh, yeah, Zulu. Zulu's yeah. the biggest. Except yeah. That's cool. the slaps. The slaps are slightly bigger than... No. Are you sure? I'm 90% sure I checked before that show. <laughs> I guess, yeah. It's like a big difference. Yeah. Very big. <laughs> yeah. Soul Glow. Yeah. Soul Glow was there too. Soul Glow. Yeah. They were fine. What do you guys bands. think is the determining factor of a of a size of a band? Yeah, we were talking about is that it, last I, week. I was going off of Spotify is monthly Spot- listeners. It's Spotify Because that's a good, yeah. that's yeah. a good, like, because yeah. like the total number of streams, you can have no one that listens to your song, but you had like one big hit yeah. and everyone's listening to that. And it's like, okay, you have a lot of monthly listeners off that one song, but if you have a lot of songs at a middle level of streams, mm-hmm. like number of streams and a lot of monthly listeners, it's like people returning like to they come back. your wider catalog mm-hmm. more, you know, yeah. than like one song. Yeah, and so I don't know. I think the slaps are like 10k or 11k or something like that. Yeah. At least when I checked, yeah. No way. I go off Instagram followers. I know. That's that yeah. you can't do I think, that. Yeah, I think Instagram I think followers so. because like you that. could listen to a song once and then you're part of that monthly listener for the whole month. There but if you're like, an actual fan of a band and you follow them on Instagram, well, the monthly listener so thing many is bands I listen to but don't follow. It's never. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. Because, yeah. a lot of music. Because people be posting too much and it's like I'm so tired of. But if you if you listen to a band, are you gonna go see them live? And you don't follow them on Instagram. Like, you know, if you're listening to them consistently, you know they're coming. Yeah. Um, I, I've yeah. seen a lot of bands that I don't, like, follow, yeah. follow on Yeah, that's what I was telling this guy. I was like, it's not about the followers, Sorry. I think, actually. It's California is just different like that. <laughs> I was a huge Slaps fan, and I didn't follow them on Instagram until I saw them. Yeah. So, like, oh right. I don't know. So you know, in I, fact, I, I probably don't follow half the bands I talked about. Today. There are like, Grammy yeah. winners with, like, 2,000 followers on, on right. spot, like Instagram. It's like, I, I don't think that's the best. State of Confusion is, like, Oh, tiny yeah. on Instagram, but they're a big, they're like a big deal. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. That's don't a, know. definitely an interesting thing to think about how you determine, like, objectively how yeah. big a band is well, compared to another band. Even Raccoon Tour, that's like the fourth biggest band to ever come out of Boise. But 4,000 followers. 4,000 followers. Yeah. Something. 35K monthly. I think yeah. Nate has more followers than Raccoon Tour. Than, than, than than significantly. Than yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. That kind of. But yeah, that's yeah. definitely something to think about. Um, so now, our second community question from Mr. Kale Brown at Kale Brown Music. Uh, if you could play a show with any band alive or less than alive, who would you? Who would that be? The way he worded that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Play a show, like open for a band. Yeah, like if you yeah. if you could play with any band alive or less than alive. I guess solo artists count too. So you know, just any musicians. Who would you play with? Well, my answer would probably like I feel like the answer was gonna be gauged on just who I wish I could see that mm-hmm. it's impossible to see, um, or at least to see in the way that you know. Um, oh man, I'm thinking Queens or, or Muse. Really? I don't those, know. Those I, are my. Those are coming to mind. I would love to play a show with with. Um, 
Well, they're they're kicking it around. They're still around. So highly suspect is this like kind of, and I don't love their new album, but I like they they have a special place for me for sure. So I think that Alive, like highly suspect, would be a band that I actually could see. Like I think I would like hang with them. Like I think they'd be cool. Um, as far as a band that couldn't you couldn't play for, or like even a solo art, like I just would love to meet Chris Cornell. I would have mm-hmm. loved to like Sounds had a conversation cool. with Chris Cornell. Yeah. So whether he was doing an acoustic thing or one of the other two bands, like, um, would have loved to open up for Chris Cornell at some point. He was, yeah, he has a special place for me. Um, probably 21 Pilots because I would just, like, dream about, like, I would be so invested with, like, the touring bands they went with, like Judah and the Lion and um, John Bellion. I got mm. really big into them because they were... <laughs> He's okay. laughing at you. I was into John no, Bellion, John too, because I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Why? That's just funny. It's okay, Bella. I understand. I was into that same same I, I thing in middle school. I think his production does him no favors. That's literally it. Yeah, it's I cr- agree. well. See, I'm not. That's why I didn't mention him before. And like my I favorite feel like stuff. John Bellion is constantly in a literal bubble. <laughs> like that's how his. It's very like, like theater kid sound. music. Yeah, Whenever I think of John like. Bellion, all I think of is all time low and how ridiculous the <laughs> production on that is. That yeah. song is like yeah. yeah. No, um, but I was, like, obsessed with those bands we'll simply because they were touring yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 Pilots, and I always yeah. wanted to be, like, one of those bands. Like, how did they, they get there? Yeah, mm. and so yeah. I still like Judah and the... And then I would I would be obsessed with Judah and the Lions touring um, band members. There's this band called Will Dorado. Um, I met them because I went to Judah and the Lions show when they came to Boise. So, I mean, That's 21 cool. Pilots. Yeah. I wasn't making fun of you. It's okay. I don't really care for John Bellion anyway. I really don't care for him anyway. So I was just confused. I was like, why? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm glad that like you guys are willing to admit the smoke and mirrors by Imagine Dragons and it like is. twenty. Like, why pilots, would you not? Like you gotta like, respect listen to it. it. Like it's like listen only, to every it. time. Can, yeah. Every time I tell someone, oh yeah, like this song by Imagine Dragons at school, is like Imagine Dragon these balls. Like they just they can't get over the fact that their name is a joke. But you then can, it's like, like <laughs> you can hate on hate on them as much as you want, well, and like I don't like their music, like ninety percent of their music at all. Yeah. But I have very good memories, and it's not necessarily my thing now. But if I listen to it, I can be like, yeah, I get why this is good. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I, I liked this in middle school and elementary school, and exactly. I understand why. Yeah. And I'm glad that you guys are the type of people that can acknowledge that and like Twenty One Pilots I, and talk about that. Well, we and don't John have sticks up our asses. Like, music. Like, man. Well, I just hate the like trying to prove like. Well, I yeah. just hate the like. <laughs> The attitude of like, um, what do you call that? What is that? Uh, I don't. I can't remember. Like the elita- word right now. elitism, kind of. Yes, I hate elitism. Mm-hmm. I hate that shit. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a lot just of like. Sonic I'm like, youth. yeah, like, and I only listen to. It's the. It's I only listen to cool underground bands. Don't listen to anyone. The oh, what? Yeah. The the pedophile from Juno. <laughs> Wait, who's the pedophile the from Juno? I know the movie. <laughs> who's, the, who's the pedophile? The, the, the dad. Oh, the dad. Yeah. That guy. Is he a pedophile? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because she haven't like, seen that movie. Like, I girl have. Dude, this is so true. That's like, so facts, man. I, I, I have, okay. To be that. fair, I didn't see it since I was like five or six, but I remember that like you were five or six and didn't watch it since. Yeah, that's crazy. No, my I have an older sister who's significantly older than me. Okay. She was like 16 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, so I would like watch movies. That looks like, ama- it makes a little more sense. Well, and I just haven't seen it since then. I just remember it was like, like put that together. But he is a pedophile. Yeah, yeah he totally it's definitely is. creepy. Yeah. That totally. He totally is. How yeah. Yeah. That from Imagine kind Dragons of to pedophiles in like 45 <laughs> seconds. Fucked. If you were like the creepy dad from Juno, I'd be like, oh, the pedophile. I wonder how that feels for that that actor uh what's his name jason now? bateman no 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 <laughs> oh. the uh elliot page, elliot page. Oh. like i feel like that was his biggest role yeah. but it's of a very you know i don't know i just that's interesting that's yeah. like my only thought i've ever given that sense is but yeah mm. elliot page good movie yeah the elitism of music tips. anyway yeah it's, it's like, definitely like i've wanted to i've wanted to be like hey you gotta give at least a little respect to give imagine some respect. you gotta give some respect there's so many in all types of i was art, a cringe i was cringe. one of those terrible 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 middle school kids that was listening to awol nation regularly <laughs> and really enjoying that and like I hey hope. you can listen to like it's not great but there's some bangers you know there's some stuff like, and then there's some stuff that i love the like when you do find, like, I, I wish I was around for, like, the discovery of some of those, like, 
you know how like some of these bands like their first album or first record or first like demos are like the best mm-hmm. like Maroon 5 okay yeah okay he, oh, doesn't, no. he doesn't like Cray yeah Flowers is so fire. Maroon 5's first album is I just so learned good. that they used to be a grunge band I didn't know that I and so like what I'm saying is like I was talking to her about this because I recently just like went back and listened to the whole first record 21 Pilots album it's just all Tyler Joseph and Pure I was gas. like I was like I wish I was around for when this was just on like YouTube with like 200 views that was you like my I mean? Roman like, Empire as a kid like I it was like I don't know why but it took up all of my brain space I was like I want like I wanted to be there when they That's were still cute. in Columbus like he was still performing for like his church and like the gym in the church yeah. you know yeah like that and I always wanted to be there for like bands like that and I wished there was like some sort of scene in Boise like that I didn't know there was a Boise music scene until literally college yeah so I mean that's actually been super fun too like seeing myself through like especially Bella like obviously Gavin but Gavin played in shows back home like I remember like the discovery of like oh my gosh death proof coffee and like there's a stage and there's lights and there's like these guys are from boise like yeah. or these these people are from boise and it's like they make music and they're just like me yeah like, like my my seventh yeah. grade um science teacher she mentioned that her husband was in a band so instantly i was like i'm so obsessed and it was not my type of music it was like country music yeah so but i was like I was interested in it because I was like, if there is a band from Boise, like, they could be 21 Pilots. And I just, I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. And now Lee weighs that for me, and I'm in it, so. Wow. It all comes full circle. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Who knows, maybe, maybe the next big band is, like, out there right now and you're seeing them every thursday or whatever you know you just said you have no i think it's you're seeing them on november 24th at the shrine basement yeah 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 (laughs) super it's super good and important to support also obviously like local band and also that's the other thing oh my gosh okay real quick have to shout out a couple okay there is like a scene like this everywhere Mm -hmm. you go to you drive to freaking denton texas and like you'll see this like Oh my gosh, I can't even, so when we went on that raccoon tour, tour, <laughs> like I saw some of my favorite, like, s- like small bands that I've ever, like, I s- listen to them regularly, like Sunfo from uh, Oklahoma, I believe, they kind of all mixed together, and then The Low Blow from Nashville, Tennessee, oh my god, and they've got like, I don't know, I'm not actually gonna estimate, but they're tiny, like they've got like not a lot of monthly listeners or followers really, but they are so, so good, and it's just so cool to like, get out there and see that that is it's just super cool there's yeah. this kind of stuff happening what i started everywhere. doing is like choosing a, a place and being like all right i'm gonna see what bands are from here yeah like, and there is there's always yeah there it's always, always there's always like great music some of the music i listen to the most are just like random Tiny bands with bands 24 from, listeners mm-hmm. you know like um a while back some uh this band um blair gun from san diego okay. hit up bum about maybe booking a show they weren't able to get a show here but they say they want to come eventually because they've heard that our music yeah. scene's pretty good yeah. and um so they hit us up and uh, i i was like oh these guys are cool and i started listening to them and through them and like the people they were playing with on their instagram i found like a bunch of other bands and now i'm listening to like all these random small bands from san diego that's yes. like really 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 and that's good the music most fulfilling that no listening about. sometimes too yeah because you can hear the production you can actually hear like the decisions that were i mean you can hear that in everything it's the rawness but, but you hear yeah, yeah. you hear how raw and like yeah. i don't know you just you can hear them you can hear the fact that they work like a mcdonald's type of job but they're doing this because they love it instead yeah. of like a huge big not, like, production like, yeah i hate it when like songs you just there's no emotion like it's soulless i hate soulless yeah. music that mm-hmm. you can tell was created for tiktok because there's like the song is mid and then there's 15 seconds and that's like a relatable lyric or some shit you could do turn to yeah that's how you get like a d c a b c d e f u or whatever oh, yeah. oh my like, gosh that's uh, real music yeah. okay no I'm kidding. <laughs> it's and like then, and then no literally for taylor swift on the air store. that's true yeah well yeah like or like when a great artist puts out a song and you're like, I can tell like you were fishing for like a TikTok mm-hmm. trend with this. It's yeah. like, is it's like 
I, I feel like I, I definitely have a couple like uh, music elitist takes at least a little yeah, bit, no, but I feel like I'm totally elite. justified. Well, they're in it. valid. See, that's like, a spectrum. Yeah, I, right? I feel like like I feel TikTok has really damaged the way oh, music know. is now mm -hmm. because it's all it's about bad. that one like 30 second clip that someone can dance to on and TikTok, so, and then it gets like millions of listens, but it's only that part of the song that mm -hmm. people know, yeah. and like you don't really grow creatively or through you, that. Yeah. Or you see like them performing live, and the crowd is silent until they're like. Wait, the one part like the know. pickup of yeah. the song yeah. happens, they're like, oh, yeah. oh. And it's like, yeah. Empire was the decay of Steve Lacey's mental health on the on the Gemini Rights tour. I would because admit, because they're like, no I, I buy my tongue. Years. No one knew his music. And, and his music is great. Yeah, yeah Steve Lacey's Steve good. Lacey for how long now? Four years or something? Huh. And I was just like, Dang, yeah, wish Dang. me too. Steve. Yeah. I would have yeah. yelled every lyric. Every single lyric. I feel like I was going to say something. Too. Yeah, it, it's it, it's a yeah. That, when, that kind of stuff's about what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Uh, the other thing is like, apart from like just knowing one part of the song, mm -hmm. it's always like, okay, Olivia Rodrigo got really big, and people like her because her songwriting feels real. Yeah, like it's yeah. her, it's authentic. It's you know? authentic. But then yeah. Gail and like a bunch of other. Like no hate to Gail, I'm sure they're an okay right. person, but it's like right. it's like a lot of people came out afterwards that were just like doing that type of thing, but it isn't it just isn't like as enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel real. It just feels like like fake generic music that's yep. made for TikTok, and you yeah. can like hear that and be like, okay, that. this is a an Olivia Rod Rodrigo copy with no emotion. And for it, sure. al it almost makes like Olivia Rodrigo's music like one of those guilty pleasure things like i mm -hmm. feel like mm -hmm. i i get that like elitist thing when i listen to her because i really like olivia rodrigo i love her first album so her lyricism is really good too and yeah. her lyricism yeah. is great and the music is actually really great you can tell it's for radio obviously you can tell it's for a younger audience yeah but because of like all of this tiktok trends and like people copying her it almost makes her music like embarrassing to listen to which it's not it's great yeah definitely I, I i've met some people that are like yeah she's good and i really like her music but then they 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 feel weird about it yeah about liking it because it's like um it's that type of music you know mm -hmm. and there's so much other stuff that's like that that's been influenced by that that's like actually embarrassing to listen to and yeah. so people like kind of um shy away from like right being proud like out and proud about like listening to that music. type of shit because pop music is good music yeah there's, there's so good, many there's great some, pop yeah. music songs and yeah. i listen to a lot of pop yeah. yeah i i the way i think about it is like you know maybe pop music isn't your thing maybe a lot of the stuff that's out there that's really popular that's like pop music isn't exactly the type of music you'd want to listen mm -hmm. to there's always something out there for you yeah. but you have to let you can't just dismiss pop music because you know you can't dismiss any like, genre, any yeah, genre yeah, even you country, can't dismiss any even music like, even country if even hip-hop i mean it's like listen to jazz oh this is <laughs> like overplayed oh this is this it song is, is popular but it's like not that good it's like well it's popular for a reason it's good enough that people wanted to listen to it over and over mm -hmm. again and there definitely are songs where it's like i don't get why this is popular but you know yeah. the vast majority of it is like okay there's definitely appeal here this mm -hmm. is at least well made you know right. and so like I, I definitely think you can have those ideas like oh i don't like this but you can't just totally throw it out and be like yeah, no, it's not for me because there's got to be something, you know. Well, and I will say, you know, like we kind of mentioned, like the TikTok stuff and the trends and whatever this and that. Yeah. Like, I think for me, the mo one of the most fulfilling things is just performing live, like playing live in front of two, three people, four people, ten people, twenty. You know, performing live in any setting, orchestral, rock, drums, singing, like that is where I feel like, you know, and like you mentioned, like. These people only know like the 15 second clip, you know, and they only know that one part. Um, the actual, you know, people that are gonna stick with you and ride or die are the people that, that were blown away live, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's like, that's super powerful. That's like where music comes from is yeah. seeing someone create it. And so, um, yeah. One of the things I hate actually about the whole TikTok thing is I, the sped up, 
Mm. I don't know if that's from oh TikTok God. or if it's mm. from like people's nightcore phases. Well, yeah, but, like, nightcore's yeah. been around but, like, since, the spend uh, of, since like, that. Two times speed of the 15 second clips over and over again. Yeah. If you love that song so much, then why are you? It's they don't like the song. It go away that's as the thing. People's <laughs> attention spans suck. That's why songs are Dude. like a minute and a half now. Which the, sucks. Yeah. Well, the, and it's then annoying. they're making they're making sped up versions and slowed yeah. and reverb no, versions no, reverb yeah. that are official releases. So I've gone to like an artist Spotify page. It's like, oh, I like this person's music and I see a slowed and reverbed version of their song I'm like why why did oh. this need to be an official well, release I've there's actually, like eight of these on YouTube with millions of views I've actually yeah. heard um, people talking about this is because people do this maybe they're not too thrilled about it themselves but other people are making money off of their songs yeah. by doing that mm-hmm. and so yeah. they they just go ahead and do it themselves because oh, like people are gonna listen to if I don't know a kid wants to listen to that they might as well like get the money from their own song. Yeah, I get like the monetary sense, reason guess, for it. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah. it's weird that that's like an accepted thing now. That's like, yeah, yeah slowed and reverbed or Blame nightcore decor. versions oh of music. It's like, the wow, cores. crazy. Nightcore, decor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first, so Miguel, the R&B singer, his first album came out in like 2010, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Sure Thing is on that album. Yeah. But on the most recent, now that's what I call music, there's a sped up version mm. of it. Like in oh the my god, track that's so <laughs> weird. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's fun. We gotta do that. Yeah, yeah okay. Gonna... Alright, well, that's all, right, all of the uh, the questions and stuff that we had written out, so now we can move on to our special activity. Do you want to introduce that? Random things bracket. <laughs> oh lord. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Eight random things pitted against each other. First off, we got Jack Harlow versus a steel pan. A steel pan? Yeah, like the... Oh, like a hand pan? A hand pan. Okay. That's hard, oh, no, actually. No, no, but Loki, I oh, really like, like steel I drum. see some Okay. Yeah. No, Jack yeah. Harlow's actually really good. But... <sighs> I'm choosing a steel pan, man. Do you hear, like, steel yeah, drum? Yeah, no, steel that, pan is I'm so, so I've spent, spent multiple Jack hours Harlow at Guitar is, Center yeah. just with a steel pan. A, a, a person playing a steel pan yeah. could make music better than Jack Harlow. <laughs> Jack Harlow could never make something as good as the uh, the steel that's drum so solo on Just the Two of Us. That's true. I'm that's so, so it's true. true. <laughs> it's okay. just that's a like fact. That's like my favorite song. So I'm Put choosing that. the that. all-time favorites yeah. right there. <laughs> That was like the first song I That's learned on the bass. That's such a good song. Actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think that, Ooh. like just, th- just that puts it so much higher than Jack Harlow for me. Like. Okay. And yeah. Zaza. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Zizi. Sorry. The winner. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear. I hear. Still Sorry, we yeah. talk so much. All right. No. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, we can get this done in like five minutes. So, uh, we got uh, Grid Paper versus Anastasia, 1997. The movie. What? What was the first one? Grid, Grid paper. paper. Grid Remind paper. me what that movie's about. It's about the Romanovs and like it's like the the Russian royal like the cartoon. Family. Yeah, the cartoon. The cartoon. The Russian royal family. Oh right. And then there was like the whole hoax where it was like the daughter went missing. Right, and right. And then they find her. Yeah. And it's like a fictionalized version. Of right. Uh, I love Grid Paper. I do like Grid Paper. I love to doodle. I'm a doodler. Yeah. I, yeah. I've seen that movie. It's like. I was it's more of a right. princess and the frog if I was going to yeah. choose. You know, I'm not choosing Anastasia ever. There's a lot of movies so. I'd rather watch than Anastasia. And Grid Paper like, is great. Grid Paper is so you, fun. Like, I'm, like, I'm choosing like, Grid Paper over the other paper. Pencil. Lord. One of those I'm fancy, one paper. of those fancy metal uh, mechanical pencils. Oh, yes. Where yes. they're made of metal. Yeah. Like, yes. Nice, nice they're weighty, heavy. They kind of feel. On the gr- oh, like the yeah. They feel paper. a little Dude. heavy. You yeah. know, there's it's, like some weight. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Or like like a nice pen, you know, just on the grid paper. You can. Yeah, you can do anything. No problem. Okay, I think grid paper wins that. <laughs> Easy. Uh, let's go. A silly dog versus the video where over one thousand musicians play "Smells Like Teen Spirit." <laughs> <laughs> a what dog? A silly dog. A silly dog. Oh, a silly dog. Every day. God. Yeah. I, have a silly I think dog. a silly dog has <laughs> to win. Her name's Coco. This. I gave her a hug and a kiss before I came here because I just I. I just love her so much. Yeah. <laughs> I gave our she producer, our, our lovely you know, producer's love dog. And I, I won't lie, I've been going through, I had an existential crisis because I always thought I was a dog person. It's not that I don't like dogs, it's that I just want a cat. Are you becoming a kitty girl? Yeah, I just I would love... rather have a cat than a dog. They're True. way easier to maintain. Yeah. Dogs, yeah. I don't, I don't got the time to take care of a dog. They're snoring and they stink and they shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah. At least a cat knows, like, at least a cat like has its own little bathroom and it's like, it like covers it's like clean. it. Yeah. I hear yeah. I, there's a theory I guess I don't I'm, maybe you guys know I, don't, I guess cats 
don't know the difference between their species and other species. They can't tell. Yeah, so they actually yeah. think that we're big, dumb cats. Yeah, they think that we're, like, part of their cat And they colony. think that they have to take care of us, which yeah. is why they treat us the way they do. Yeah. Lately, I've been living, I think that's like, cool. oh, that's like cat really cool. theme. Like, I just can't stop saying purring. So I'm, like, I'm just, like, always <laughs> The cat purring. emojis. I, and and, I'm, and I am literally... I yeah, use the cat does. emojis. The only emojis he says. If any... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I use the cat emojis so much. Okay, so. but in this question, silly dog. Silly dog. I think so. Yeah. I don't know how we got. I'm sorry. I don't know how we got to cats. But I just love cats. I'm a kitty girl. This is why we never get anything done. That's <laughs> why it takes us a year to release us on a. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> to play devil's advocate and at least consider our other options. That video of a thousand people playing oh, smells like. I don't spirit, think that's real. I don't. I it's. it's it's so funny. It's kind of like funny. all like jumping around the microphones. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. It's and kind of aerial view, and it's like all of these drummers playing the exact same. Dude, Dude, no like, I don't it know, man. That's a really hard vibe. song to play. Get a hundred people to play like "Smells Over Like Teen thousand. Spirit." They that reminds me. Yeah. Thousand, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a thousand like, drummers to play "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Yeah. Together, <laughs> same, like same the dynamics. No ghost notes added. No way, dude. There's no way. Okay. Yeah. I don't even want to I say what I wanted dog. to say. Silly dog for silly sure. Silly dog. <laughs> Moving uh, on. Next, next question. Next is going to go uh, 4.57 p.m. versus Randy's football career. <laughs> that's like the worst time of the day. Ew! I hate that. Yeah, 4.57 yeah, p.m. to 6 p.m. is the worst time of the day. I agree. I'm going with Randy's football I'll take Randy's football career, yeah. Four fifty-seven. I heard rumors that like he was supposed to like... Go to Do Idaho State. State? I was I was talking Idaho State. Uh, Were you talking to Randy Boise State? No, I was never talking officially yeah, to anybody in Boise State. But he had a, he had an injury. He tore his ACL. Yeah, making it a league. Yeah. Cool yeah. <laughs> no, actually, you know that, that career photo. got ruined by TikTok. If we're being completely <laughs> oh, honest, boy. that's a story and a half. I'm not going. More there. leeway lore right no, there. No. <laughs> Unlocked. I still that's take even if even if you didn't make it to the league. I think I take I take I take a Randy's football career at 457 because 457 is either like. Because you're like really hungry, but it's inappropriate to eat. It's at that not. Time. A time, <laughs> but it's just like, like, no, it's like, like the worst time that's ever. The, that's my favorite question. And you want to take a nap so bad, but you're like, this is the time I have. Like I and should do homework or something. Four fifty seven is either right after or oh, right like before I get off of work. Because I either get do? off of work at like four thirty or that's four. Well, or like but five. you can't. It's like you nap, but also like you're hungry, but also you need to do yeah. like work or homework. It's, and also yeah. you're or you're exactly. driving and and the traffic oh, is yeah. the worst. It's it's the At weird middle part. Four fifty seven. That's the worst, the worst traffic. The it's like it's okay. like if you're working, that sucks. You're at work. If you're not working, it's like okay. I'm hungry. If you're outside, I'm not gonna eat no, but dinner. Even, if, even if you're at work, yeah, it's like it's like right before again. rush, so it's like slow. Yeah, but you it's can't that like slow, sit down but you're anxious. because you just got to work, <laughs> so like, you can't like not work. Slow, but yeah. you're anxious is like my constant hurry up and wait is what that mind. is. Yeah, yeah like I mean, ever. yeah, I, I work at the this is I work at like the help desk at yeah. Boise State for IT, right? That's cool. So like it's like call, 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 like normal levels of whatever is going on and then like 4.30 onwards nobody. Most of the things on campus close at like 5 yeah. so yeah. a lot of times it's just like nothing, nothing. It's so slow and so like 4.57 right before I get off <laughs> no one's calling, I have nothing to do and it's like yeah it's downtime I could do whatever I want but at the same time it's like I'm not it's not like I have nothing to do and I'm at home. I have nothing to do and I'm at the place yes. where I'm supposed to have something to do. You've convinced me with good arguments here. I'm taking football career, I guess. Randy's probably. football career. I relate Randy's to Randy's football, football career. career because I also played football. Randy's and I was also the team You played captain, football? And I also played Melophone in the market. Crazy. Yeah, she Whoa. played volleyball. That's so I I You're confusing everyone. Just kidding. I played volleyball in high school. Played and no I played sports the cello, in high school. So I'm like Strict the girl band kid. Of that. That's, that's a football player's physique right there. Like It is, actually. That's the body type. Yeah. Yeah. I am built like a linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that famous photo of Dan Marino and Chad Ochoa <laughs> taking, uh, taking Randy off the field in 97. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Next question. Steel pan versus grid paper. Oh, yeah, we're going... Okay. Steel pan. Yeah, now steel pan paper. clears. Steel pan, yeah. Wait, yeah. yeah. You guys remember that guy on TikTok like a year ago? He's like, he would always sit by the river and he would always be on TikTok live and he'd just be like... I'm not Nothing. on TikTok, just but straight that sounds ASMR, amazing. The river I mean, just going, and he's just on a steel pan, dude. It's a vibe it has. I mean, yeah. At some point with the grid paper, it's like well, you make an awesome drawing or a nice organized thing. Well, what are you gonna do with that? But then like, it yeah, smudges, it's, and it gets all over your. Well, head. also it's grid paper. It's not like you can't. Ma that's not a piece of art that you're gonna do anything with. You know what I mean? Like if you mm -hmm. like tear it and then like change the frequency, you can make a song out of it. 
maybe. But that's too much effort. You could just go yeah, crazy. Yeah, you could on just it. go. Yeah, you yeah, just go pan. nuts hitting a steel pan. Yeah. It's like yeah. Is this isn't the, all in like the same key. Like you can't like play a wrong note. Yeah, it's all. It's built around a scale. So I yeah. think it's built around what is it? The pent- is it pentatonic? Because there's like no wrong notes. Yeah, I mean it's all it's all right notes, but I don't know what scale okay. particularly is built around. I guess it depends on which one I you get. Because I'm no sure idea. you could make them in different keys. That's yeah. true. But yeah, the one final thing I'll say though is like, grid paper. Another thing that that. Before, steel before pan. grid paper's down and out. Yeah, steel, yeah, steel the pen, clearly better than grid paper. Because have you ever been writing on grid paper, like, at school, outside, at, like, the end of the school year? So it's hot. It's like, and but it's, like, windy, so it's flapping around. Well, oh. and, and oh if, it's, if it's hot, the reason I said at, like, the end of the school year, you know, like, summer's about to yeah. happen, so it's already warm. Yeah. If it's hot outside and your hands are sweating, um. and you put your hand on the paper, the blue ink from, like, the grids S- smudges. smudges. And that's that doesn't yeah, happen with a steel pan. You know? Not like, happening. steel pan might get hot because it's metal, but it's, like... I, you can hit it. You can go to a shade. Yeah. Get yeah. a shade. You're fine. Go and yeah. sit in the shade and play your. You can steel sweat pan. all day long on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a steel pan was that. Yeah, clearly. Let's go with silly dog versus Randy's football career. Silly dog. Sorry. Yeah, silly dog. <laughs> no, you're right. Thanks. Randy's football career, short and sweet. <laughs> but, but the dog is just... Dog is forever. Dog is... Yeah. Dog is forever. Yeah, I think the dog clears there. Randy's <laughs> football career died, and not a lot of people talk about it. You're right. <laughs> but and if I, your dog thankfully. dies, you will remember that dog forever, you, you know? They did mm-hmm. on You'll keep those ashes, you know? Yeah, dogs are just longer lived than, than Randy's football <laughs> career. I hate football so much. I want you know, to You gotta go to every single Boys yeah. Day home game. So do you guys versus a silly dog to, to round it I love dogs, but I I think steel I pan steel pan. pan. Yeah. I, I bring back up the cat thing, you know. If, if it was, was a cat, maybe we're. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah it was if, a if cat, it was a silly cat, like dude, a that silly cat. like a dumb orange cat, dude. Oh that's, man, that's sure the cat's up tongue. there. That <laughs> yeah. that would be yeah. sick. Yeah, that, yeah, that, like that, that would that would be pan, but as a silly dog, I don't think. I if it's a silly dog going versus the I'm steel like, pan, like. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like an old woman. Like I'm just cranky. I'm like, get off my lawn. That's how I feel about dogs sometimes. Because I'm like, why? I'm like, why do you want my food so bad? Yeah. Or like if it's like whining to get on the bed, I'm like, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. I, I definitely, I definitely Let me get sleep. That. Cats can can be annoying. Like they my, can. my roommate's yeah. cat is like so loud. They just all keep the time. meowing. Yeah. Well, like they she'll just sit. lick you. And it's it hurts. like 3 a.m. and if they don't have food, they will make sure yeah. you are if, up to feed them. If they... there's no one around and the cat is out there, if my roommate's in her room and I'm in my room, the cat will sit in our hallway and yell. Oh. Just like, just like ask cats. Dude, my do cat, yell. my cat yeah, was they worse. They do screams. Yeah, she gets a screaming mad. cat. She needs interaction. They do screams. My cat would scratch. At my bedroom door at home, there is scratches, scratch marks. <laughs> like, like in the door? Like a foot up from the ground where my cat would just scratch oh every night at three in the morning. For whatever reason, she wouldn't go to my brother's room, only mine. And yeah. I'd have to wake up every night at like three in the morning and go feed her. It was the yeah. most annoying thing ever. Like Hated cats it. cats can be annoying. They're not perfect beings by any means. But, but it's a cat. Dogs... Like, you know, dogs are like imperfect in a different way. In a know? different way, they're dogs. Dogs are like an annoying Sorry to toddler, all you dog and cats lovers. are like a toddler yeah. that you really like being around. And you know, that's the unpopular decision. You know, most people are like dogs, dogs. It's like oh, pupper, doggo, heck. It's like it's not like I hate dogs. I don't I just hate like dogs. I love more. dogs. Well, it's, it's it's a gamble. Like, I'll it's a like 50 either you know? way. Yeah, that'd be nice. I think EB cat is the Gen Z equivalent to a heckin' doggo. That's yeah. true, and it <laughs> yeah. is pretty cringe. Yeah, it is still cringe. Maybe a little. Yeah, yeah. heckin' doggo EP cat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so steel, steel pan, pan, so steel pan unless it was a silly cat. Yeah. Steel pan steel throws steel down. Pan the pan threw down. Though. They threw yeah. down here. Steel it pan destroys. Didn't really have any competition. Yeah. 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 Like easy win. I knew for it was going to win from everyone. the beginning. To be I I as soon as you too. said it, I was like, there's nothing cooler. Just than looking that. at the bracket, the yeah. matchups. There's yeah. <laughs> nothing that was going on that steel pan couldn't handle. The yeah, depth like, on that team coaching was just. It was unanimous for all of us. Every time steel pan was there, we all agreed instantly that steel pan was better. Pretty quickly, yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Steel pans are just beautiful. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Literally. Cool. Well, I guess that's it. All right. Shout that's out it. your socials and upcoming shows. Any Sick. projects that anyone else has? Like, oh, outside yeah. Any, of anything you want to say to I close this and that's it. I love writing music, so I might, I might birth some songs. I might mother some songs. The Bella Bennett stuff. Bella Bennett song. Um, but, 
Yeah, I don't know. Instagram. Uh, yep. Leeway dot official. No, no dot. There's no, no there's dot. No, there's no dot. I don't no, know yeah, why it's I just, said it's dot. It's just Leeway official. At Leeway official on Instagram. Uh, no dot. If you just probably look up Leeway on Facebook. We, we, we mean a Facebook page. And it's Facebook. Leeway with an A, not two E's. It does yeah, have an A. Wrong. Yeah, let's, let's not talk about why. And then... Um, Let's see. You don't want to know why. November 24th? <laughs> oh, yes. November 24th, uh, Shrine Underground. You go on uh, at 10 p.m.? That's actually going to be a pretty sweet show. Uh, Teenage Lotus. Halloween. Switch for Lotus has a very, 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 very good place in my heart. I love them. Love Switch. Um, and then uh, Teenage Halloween. They're from Jersey, I think. And mm-hmm. fun fact, they actually did the raccoon to her hot sauces. Oh, really? They made those. That's so I funny. I didn't know that until... Is that why they very recently are they gonna they have the racket that so- hot sauce cool. with them at the show? Oh, dude, we that'd be crazy. Because if if they do if have they do. some, I gotta get an. Uh, you need a leeway hot sauce. I was gonna buy it. I didn't want to spend the money on, yeah, yeah. on getting like buying and having it shipped to me. I didn't if... buy a raccoon to hot sauce. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> Isn't it like pumpkin spice? It's hot like sauce? pumpkin spice. I think it sounds like, weird. It sounds very jail. weird. Starbucks drink. You're going to jail. Weird man. Here's the thing though. I will defend this at least a little though, because like, for like like in June, my family took a trip. And uh, we were in New Orleans, and there was a hot sauce shop there mm. that was just hot sauce. Like, no. everything was spicy. It was, like, some spicy candies and stuff, but bottles and bottles of hot sauce. And then you could, ta- like, taste test them. And my oh. dad and I ended up getting one, and it was this apple cider. It was, like, apple cider vinegar and uh, hot sauce stuff. So, you know, um, instead of, like, normal vinegar, it was apple cider vinegar, so it kind of had an apple flavor. And I think that the pumpkin spice could, like... I could see it end up in like this a similar kind of yeah. kind of no, thing where it I, sounds I weird it. but it's really good. Next time I see Nate, I'm gonna definitely be trying it because yeah. he got like a couple, um, but I haven't. I didn't want to buy my own. Yeah, we we'd have to buy our own. So. I can justify spending money on on something that I would probably try once and then not use. Well, very we want to do a leeway hot sauce some, at some point. That would be cool. We might talk to them at the show when we meet them. So I'm excited. They're actually they're they're gonna be good. So. If, um, yeah, we're playing after them, you know, doing a little tour sandwich on the 24th. That's a Saturday, Friday, Black Friday. Yep, wow. day after Thanksgiving. Yep, day after Thanksgiving Crazy. at the Shrine Underground, and then uh, December 14th also at the Shrine Underground. So January 9th, 12th? I don't know the date for sure on that Shredder. one. We're playing the Shredder in January. Awesome. Down the road. Um, so, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. Listen to Spotify. We have one song out. Some other ones coming out very soon. So... Yeah, two, More on the way. We're writing. We're writing. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's a wrap. Thank, thank you, guys. you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thanks for so coming fun. on our podcast. This is my favorite Boise, like, really, like, anything, um, actually. So, no, this is super And I've, like, cool. mentioned this almost every time I see you guys. But seriously, <laughs> this is, like, you guys are my favorite group of people in the scene. So thank just you, Randy. You guys to know that. Thank you. Yeah. That's sick. I love you, too, Randall. Thanks. Thank you. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for Thank coming you. on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Cue outro music, Jamie. Play us yeah. out.